I want to say thank you for tuning in to this message. Uh, we are grateful uh, that you are here with us this morning and uh, pray that the message uh, reaches you where you are. Uh, we know that there's a lot of people tuning in from all over the state of Texas and really all over the country and all over the world. And our prayer is, is that you feel the presence of the Lord during this message and you leave changed. Uh, Any time that you encounter Jesus in the Holy Spirit, you're going to have something happen. And that's what we're excited about, uh, is you being able to uh, connect with the Lord through the message today. We're so thankful that you're with us. Uh, now, enjoy the message. Terry and Christy, would you guys come up? Terry and Christy Cooper, uh, many of you know them. Terry has been in charge of our care ministry here and prayer ministry, and Christy's been a part of kids ministry here. And so when, <clears throat> when SOS came through, I made an announcement at that point, there was the possibility, high probability, that Terry, now Christy, could be joining them because they're missing the spiritual component. They've used local pastors. And if you know a pastor in a growing church, there's really not a lot of time to do stuff outside of that. So the ministry wasn't really getting what the ministry needed from a spiritual focus perspective, if that makes sense to you. And they knew, wanted to do something about it, and they have. So Christy and Terry are going to be joining SOS, yeah, it's exciting. Absolutely, yeah. And they're staying here. They're not going anywhere. And if you see them trying to go somewhere, get a hold of them, you know. Yeah, there's not much to protect you. Yeah, it's like you got, you're follically challenged also. And so, <clears throat> so we're, we support them. We are thankful they're staying. We're thankful they're going to be a part of our church. And we're thankful that 63,500 people that go through SOS, there's going to be a real focus on salvations and people to be healed, families to be restored. They've got their work cut out for them. I mean, it could be the biggest church in the whole area. When you, if you look at it from that perspective, the work of ministry, it's a pretty cool deal. And so we want to pray for them today. Um, and we're going to talk about a subject that they're familiar with today, sacrifice. Uh, what you don't know about Terry, he is a professional killer, licensed and trained. It's not talked about very often. He worked for ABC Pest Control for a long time. <laughs> it worked better. I'm getting my, yeah. It was set up better than the last service. <laughs> I was practicing. See, you practice, you so what you what right so what you practice in private you'll be known for in public there you go. okay oh, that's scary. go ahead and true <laughs> <laughs> how are y'all <laughs> we're just we're just having our own thing going on up here this is wonderful so terry um, retired from there they sold everything that they had and they went to cambodia cambodia for 2 years and then left Cambodia and came here and started volunteering and then became people on staff last three years or so. Sacrifice. Now they're going to a place, SOS, that's not done this before. They've, they've been waiting on or letting guys, pastors come and fill these voids. Now they're going in in faith. That's beautiful. We're going to talk about that. And so, <clears throat> if you would, could you, we're going to pray for them. And we're going to pray a blessing over them. Would you extend your hands uh, to the Coopers this morning? And let's ask the Lord to continue to pour out his favor. God, we, we ask you right now that you would continue to pour out your favor and your blessing to your saints. You've created them for this purpose, it appears, uh, your hands all over it. And God, right now, we pray for everything that they need physically, spiritually, and emotionally would be provided by you. And we know that it will if we'll let it. God, I pray they walk in your favor as they continue to sacrifice and they serve, and not to be served, but to serve. God, I pray a blessing over SOS 
that they steward uh, the Coopers well. And God, that we continue to partner and we see uh, this amazing light, your light into this community for generations to come. That these people who show up there will think they came for food, but then realize they came for you, Lord Jesus. That's the revelation and wisdom we pray. So God, use them and use us, use the ministry, use this whole community of faith to lift your name high through this ministry, SOS, and through the Coopers. We trust you, God. Above all things and all people, we trust you because you do not and will not lie to us. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give them a hand, would you? Mm, mm, I love you. I love you, buddy. It's an exciting time. Man, it's an exciting time. So cool. So wonderful. <clears throat> I want to talk to you uh, this morning um, and tell you a couple of things, and I'm going to talk to you about something that I rarely talk to you about, rarely. Uh, I'm going to have to ask you to participate with me uh, in the beginning, though. And before I get to that beginning, um, we just went through uh, four weeks of focusing and profiling on local and international missions that we support and missionaries, we as the church, okay? Um, and here's, here's what was said by all of them in the same way. They have not been to a more friendly and welcoming and giving church, period. They felt appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. They felt appreciated. They felt loved. And they were supported. Uh, someone supported 21 kids. And, you know, people gave and bought all the stuff from Project Hope and made great donations to the stuff. And already people showing up at SOS and volunteering from the church. The church, you guys, the church, obviously you love Jesus. Because when you start to love Jesus, you start to do those things. It's like, what do I have that I can give? The creator of the heavens and the earth had that thought also. He says, I'm going to give my son as a sacrifice for you and for me. So this morning, we're going to talk about sacrifice. And I want to tell you how thankful I am to be on this journey with you guys. The other thing they said was they haven't felt the presence of the Holy Spirit like this in very many places at all. That's God's favor. That's God's presence. So if you feel it, I feel it. Well, guess what? Guess feeling it also. And man, you, there's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. So congratulations to you guys for loving Jesus well. We're moving into fall. And um, if you don't take notes here, uh, I would ask that you would today. I would ask that uh, you would get in the seat back. I'm going to give you questions, and I'd like for you to write them down. If you're old enough to write, this, uh, this today is going to affect everyone in here, no matter what your age is. I've thought about different ways to talk about this, and I've just chosen to um, talk about it just really straightforward because the message, the scripture we're going to deal with is straightforward. Uh, if you're concerned about communion, uh, don't be. We're going to have elements uh, provided to you at the end of service when we do communion together. So if you would, just uh, you can put that away and get you a pen and a piece of paper. And I'm gonna, here's your questions. Number one, does your giving really cost you? Does your giving really cost you? Second question, how much is left behind? Man. You've heard this message. Question number three. Are you giving from the heart? Yeah. If you're thinking it's, this is headed somewhere, it is. 
Four, are you demonstrating a trust in God? The very, very last question is this one. Are you giving generously slash cheerfully as the widow who gave two mites? Here's what we're going to do. If you would turn in the scripture to Mark 12, please, starting in verse 41. If you have your Bibles with you, I ask that you would turn there. Um, depending on your translation, different words are used in different places. Uh, we're going to see the Lord speaking written in red here in the back half of 43. Um, but if you've been around church for very long, you went to Sunday school, you've uh, been in kids ministry, student ministry, it's going to be pretty rare that you have not heard this spoken about, the widow's two mites. That's not the name of the message. The name of the message is a pattern for giving. Please write that down. A pattern for giving. Now then, we're going to talk about just two things today. Just two. Money and your heart. That's it. And what you're going to find when we talk about that, you're going to find what God's heart is on the matter which is the most important thing. So let's read together, starting in verse 41. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came, threw in two mites, which make a quadrant. Verse 43, so he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. I think for that uh, scripture there, it says so many different things. The thing for me, since I'm not rich and wealthy, it gives me hope. And it should give you hope also. That is not the amount that you give. We practice, Kim and I and always have, we practice 10% tithing. We're not talking about percentages today. What we're going to talk about is your heart and is it generous and is it cheerful? That's all that's what we're going to talk about. And I think coming off of what just happened, this is a beautiful time, especially when we're trying to raise funds for the church to get where people are not standing and sitting all there. We actually have seats for everybody this morning, mostly. There's still people in the back back there. We're trying to make sure that we're not leaving out people that need to hear the gospel in this community as it grows. Anybody here uh, cannot walk over a penny or a dime or a nickel if it's out in front of the gas station? Anybody do that? I pick it up, man. I pick it up. It's like, yes, it's found. Then I read the scripture. And I'm like, can you imagine how valuable that money could be to someone who really could use it? And also it says, steal in we trust. Can't believe it's not been removed yet. It's on its way though. I don't know, if, did you know that? It's being removed from the money. Yeah, hmm. that's breaking news for some of you. I'm gonna tell you a little illustration that will help us as we get started. There was a roof on a little church um, in Switzerland. It's, and this is the turn of the 20th century and this thing was old. It was falling down and the members were having prayer meetings continuously praying for the funds to fix the roof and to fix the church. And there was an old man uh, known to be very tight with his money. Anybody know any of the, anyone like that. Some of you won't raise your hand because you may be sitting next to them. And so um, <laughs> there was an old man known to be very tight with his money. He used to attend um, 
and sit near the back of the, of the church so that when the collection plate was taken at the very end of it, he could go out the back door. Well, it happened one day where the prayer meeting was being held and he wanted to go and the vicar, the priest, the reverend, uh, they met at the door coming into the church, both running a little bit late. And then when they got through talking, service was starting and there was only one seat in the front left and the guy had to sit in the front. A storm came up and a piece of the roof and the bracing fell and hit the guy in the head on the front row. And it didn't hurt him very much, but it got his attention and it frustrated him because he's been put out a little bit. He stood up and he said, I'm going to give $1,000 to fix this roof on this church. And there was a voice from the back of the church that said, hit him again, Lord, hit him again. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I have been that guy sitting on the front row with my time, my talent, and my treasure. And there's a part of me that's still sitting in that seat on that front row. And this message convicted me of that. Lord, I pray this morning that we remove any thoughts, any condemnation that comes to us as we talk about so many important things, but your heart and our heart and how they align. And God, I pray through your love this morning as we move forward that we start to be able to answer the questions that you have for us. Do we love you and do we trust you and are we willing to sacrifice for you like you have for us? That's really what it's about. God, it's not about us raising money here today. It's about the condition of our heart today. And you know that heart better than anyone. So God, I pray that you just, you just pour into us and we receive what you have for us today in love in Jesus' name. I want to give you some statistics really quick, uh, some motivation of why. Um, and if you'll bear with me long enough, I think that you'll get to a place and you'll have some of this pressure pulled off of you. So just bear with me. Uh, here's what the breakdown looks like today. And this is something to write down in Christian churches today. The breakdown of giving looks like this. 20% of the members give 80% of the funds for um, a church. So to do math, uh, really quickly, there's 80% of the church is left and 20% of the funds that are needed uh, are there. The next step helps us. 30% of the members give the other 20%. And that was confusing to me. I mean, I can do math fairly quickly. It leaves 50% of the people with not giving anything. Zero. And that number, I want you to remember, not who gave anything, please. I think what the Lord wants to show us is something very, very clear. What I think we should focus on is this bottom 50%. And when I read some scripture to you in a bit, you're going to understand why I think that's, the, that's where our focus should be. Here's the thing. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if this stat's completely true, number one. Number two, I don't know what the percentages are here. I don't even know what you give. And it's actually a part of our system, so I don't know. Why? Because I never want the church to become a click in a country club to the people who can afford to give in larger amounts. I want it to be a level playing field for everybody. I want everyone to be accepted, whether you can give a penny or you can give a million dollars to me. It just doesn't, I don't want it to matter because I'm a human also. Does that make sense to you? Okay, cool. And also, we do post our finances every quarter. They're about to come out uh, out there. Two mites, the smallest coins in circulation, almost worth zero. That's the first point. What are they worth? Almost zero. But what were they worth to her? And then what were they worth to the Lord? People continue to give large gifts. 
And as she put her two mites down, can you imagine what the church said, what the church people said with a couple of pennies being put into a little offering or on an offering table, and that's all there was, where there's literally people stepping over that at gas stations in, in everywhere, in pockets, it's in the washing machine. It's, I mean, it's just change anymore, it just seems like it doesn't have value. It's the big givers that people want to focus on. Man, and that's not the heart of the Lord. I did a little math just, uh, just for fun. Do you know what the average price of a large Coke is? Huh? I mean, this is, when I ask a question, absolutely, you can do what you're doing. You can answer. Dollar eighty nine. Huh? Three bucks? Who, who says three bucks? Three fifty. Two fifty. Anyone else? What? Three eighty eight. What is a what does a cup of Starbucks or something like that cost? Man, okay. Now we've got a lot more participants, don't we? Huh? Starbucks may be getting more of your money than the church. I don't know. Uh, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. Easy. Easy. I love mocha frappuccinos, just in case you, don't we, honey? They just make me fatter. And so, so here I want to just continue. There's, there's something spiritual about to happen, and this wasn't it. $1.49 is what I used as an average on a drink. Oh, bottle of water? They're expensive now, aren't they? Yeah, I like that bottle, that square bottle one. It's like it just falls down. It's just like so, but yeah. But I don't, I don't buy it. It's rare. Now, if someone has it left in the refrigerator, I'm probably going to borrow it. And so, so I used $1.49. And I, and I was talking to Kim about this, and I said, so what if, uh, what if we, we, as in uh, people that go to church, what if we said we're going to stop drinking a Coke, a $1.49 Coke, water, coffee, well, energy drink, what do those things cost? Those are you know, $4, I mean, whoa, it's up there, right? What if we stop just for a moment drinking one Coke or anything, each one of us? And there's about 1,000 people now that come to church here, if you didn't know that on average, on Sunday. So you do the math really quickly. You take $1.49 times 365 times 1,000. What do you come up with? Someone do the math, because I forgot. Do $1.49 times 365. I'm gonna show you something here in just a minute. I didn't realize that you're going to be, there's going to be a math test. There's 543,850 dollars. Is that shocking? 543,850 dollars. A dollar fifty per day per person that comes to the church. There is not one person in this church that couldn't do that, or any church, or in any ministry, or any nonprofit that's trying to help people. It's just interesting to me. We get focused on the bigger numbers instead of the power of like us as a, as a body and a family, right? I mean, mountains can be moved with this little bit of faith and a couple of mites, right? It's very interesting. See, the Lord knows all these things. And he knows what can be done. Hmm. Got a couple of points here, believe it or not. One, when we give, God is counting the cost. Write it down, please. When we give, God is counting the cost. I, I began to think about the issue of sacrifice and how many people give to God's work in such a way that their gift is not sacrificial. Kim and I were having a conversation um, and we, we, we tithe regular, it's the first check that we write every month. Um, and, it's, and we like offerings, and we're, I was just telling her this morning, I'm like, we, 
man, we, we need to get another, we got to get an offering going here. We got to get, we got to, we got to get this figured out. And I think I've got an idea of the Lord's kind of been talking to me about this. And so when that started to happen, whenever that happens, even still today, it's, it's exciting, but it's also, whew, what could it be with so many other things that are needed? When we give, God is counting the cost. And are we giving through sacrifice? Or are we giving just out of, hey, we wouldn't miss it. It's kind of like people that go and gamble. I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about that. You choose to do whatever you want to do. But oftentimes it goes from, well, I have a little extra money to spend to I'm out of money. And what is the return on it? It's very interesting to me. I don't know what your financial situation is today. It's not my business. I don't look into what your finances are, and I won't. But I have noticed an interesting thing more than anything. The more people make, the less they give. I think about the corporate world for me. I gave less in most of my life than I gave towards the end of my corporate life. Because at the end of my corporate life, I started to understand the power of making an investment that was for others and not for myself. Hmm. When people's income rises, their percentage of giving usually drops. So here's what I want to ask you uh, this morning. Does your giving really cost you Back to the first question. I want, to, I want to show you something King David said. I will not offer to the Lord that which costs me nothing. Oftentimes people want to give to the kids ministry at, at any church. This is not just here. And they want to give all of their wore out kids toys. All the stuff that they couldn't get rid of in the garage sale. It's just the truth. And we refuse it. We're like, nope. If it isn't new, we want the best for our kids. We don't want your leftovers. It's not going to bless anybody usually. If you want a donation, donate it. But when you do bring something, bring your best offering, your first offering. So you guys, we haven't talked a lot about that at this church. We are now because it's important, and here's the reason. There's a lot of blessing for all of us through sacrificial giving that some of us are not participating in. When God gives, second point, when we give, God is searching for how much is left. This is a heart issue. It's not a dollars and cents issue. You have to understand what I'm saying to you today. Am I using money? I'm using money, the numbers, only as leverage to your heart. It has nothing to do with money. And once we get that down in our heart, we will understand the principle that we're talking about. Jesus looked not at the amount of the gift. He looked with how much was left over at the end. Many of you maybe have been taught the principle of 10%. We're not even talking about the principle of 10% today. We're not even taking a special offering today. We're doing none of that. We're talking about are you a cheerful giver? Do you, out of the abundance of your heart, is that how you do it? Is that how you've decided to do it? And if you ask the Lord, Lord, how do I give of my time, my talent, my treasure? See, the thing is, is the simple coca day theory isn't a theory. Numbers don't lie. And we as a church, if we would look in our storage units, if we would look in under the beds and we'd look in all the containers and we would look in and we'd just keep... And in the yard and the camper and the boat and the cars and all the things and the four-wheelers and the stuff that doesn't work, stuff that we, should, we could get rid of, it'd be shocking what kind of impact we could make in our community if we just do things like that. See, God knows that. It's a simple numbers game. Our faithfulness, our faithfulness has nothing to do with what we give Please listen to me. Our faithfulness coming to church has nothing to do with what we give. 
It's our generosity and our self-sacrifice has everything to do with what we give. God is searching for how much is left. Point three, when we give, God is considering the condition of our heart. He's considering it. What is the condition? Do they believe me or do they not believe me? And if right now, if right now you're going, golly, man, I'm just, this is why I don't, this is why I came to this church. They don't ever talk about money. Well, that's a problem. Okay, we need to every so often. And when we get to the scriptures at the end, I promise that you will feel such a wonderful reprieve. I just, I just know that you will. When we give, God is considering the condition of our heart. So, we're going to do communion in a little bit, and it's the ultimate picture of sacrifice. God so loved the world, he gave. And then his son gave his life. It's all about giving. You can't talk about Jesus and not inside sense this giving and serving. He says, I came to serve and not to be served. Do we reflect that as Christian followers of Jesus? That's the point, right? Does our giving match our relationship with the Lord? I would submit to you, it does. I'm gonna say it again. Write it down. Because there's like three messages within that. Our relationship with the Lord is actually going to show, or our giving is going to show the relationship that we have with the Lord. Second Corinthians 9, 7. So let each of you give as he purposes in his heart. He didn't say mind. He said heart. Not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And then the last point I'm going to give you today is when we give God, when we give, God is evaluating our trust. If you think God doesn't do that, you are mistaken. I'm going to prove it to you here in just a minute. When we give, God is evaluating our trust. He actually has a system. Believe it or not. Does your giving demonstrate a trust in God to provide all of your needs? Does your giving demonstrate a trust in God to provide all of your needs? We trust him with our lives. We trust him with our salvation. But will we trust him with our money? A famous pastor once said that if the gospel hasn't reached your wallet, it probably hasn't taken hold in your heart. That offended me. It did for about 30 years, 25 years. I'm like, that's all you want is my money. Get rich and fly around on jets. And, you know, they're all the same. We're all the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, no. I love Mother Teresa. She says, if you give what you do not need, you're not giving. It didn't hurt to go serve somebody. Can you imagine if you don't feel well and you've, you've volunteered at the church and you work in the sound booth or you, you're in the parking lot or at the coffee? Can you imagine that if people that just were tired or didn't feel all that great didn't show up for the coffee and the donuts and y'all showed up, there was no coffee and donuts? There'd be maybe a mutiny, not in this church, but some churches. Have I asked you enough questions yet this morning? Do you want some relief? Do you feel weight? Who feels this is weighty this morning? Who's uncomfortable? I'm, my hand is up. This, this is not an illustration of what you should do. Who feels a little uncomfortable this morning? My hand's up. Because I, like, I don't like talking about this. Because I came from a place that's all they talked about. So I'm gun shy. Honestly, 
just it's the bottom line. That's how I believe. It's just like, but I also know that it takes it to, to move ministry along. Anybody else? Come on, y'all just be honest. If you're just going like this, is, come on, man, really? You know what I mean? I could have stayed home and got picked at, you know, by my wife or my kids or somebody. Now I'm going to give you the relief, okay? 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 10. And before you start reading it, do you believe God's truthful? Does he keep his promises? Have you really ever trust, ask, have you ever done anything to see if he does keep his promises? And part of you I know haven't. I just know that. There's too many people here. There's too many people online. Here's what will happen when what you, just read this with me. But this I say, who, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudging, or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Verse 9, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now verse 10, now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits, the fruits of your righteousness. Do you see where I'm coming from now? Do you trust God? Luke 6.38, last scripture. Written in red, Jesus' words. Give and it will be given to you. Good measured, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your bosom for with the same measure you, you use, it will be measured back to you. Now then, this is important. This is not a message on you put your dollar in to the slot machine, I'm gonna get five back. That's prosperity gospel. It's prosperous to have Jesus in your life, yes. But it's, we're not, it's not just the money. It could be healing a relationship. It could be healing of a, a, a disease of some type. It could be having non-sober thinking and now we bring the Lord into it and start having sober thinking. There's so many ways that the Lord can and will bless us if we trust him, we trust him, he trusts us. So here's the thing. Anyone can count the seed in an apple. It's simple. But who can count the apples in a seed? The Lord. And that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. If you haven't been served this morning, we're going to do communion now. Our worship team and our band would come. Worship team, prayer team, come. There is not a better example ever been given than what Jesus did on the cross for giving. Never been one. If you need uh, elements, raise your hand. We're here to serve you. If you need elements this morning, raise your hand all down here in the front. The ushers are coming to you. Just keep your hands up and we'll bring elements to you. Quite a number of you. You would just, we're, we got all the, we got this place all day. We got plenty of time. As you're getting your elements and over here on the, by the uh, press box, uh, the, set, the sound booth over here. Also, yep, right down here in the center. Natalie needs elements also. Can't see much past her. Here comes Natalie. Right here. For what we're about to receive right here should be some wonderful conviction for us to listen to the Lord more.
and trust him more. What we're doing is we're celebrating the, the greatest gift known to man, and that is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that the blood that was shed on the cross didn't hide or move your sin somewhere. It, it, it took it away. And he is the only God that predicted his death and his resurrection and did and both those things happened. He's a living God and he is at the right hand of the Father still today making intercessory for you and for me. That's an amazing love. And I pray as we go into this time of um, celebration and really of him giving his life for us that we can do it with just Mm, great awe of the love that he has for us. So interesting, on the night he was betrayed, he was sitting with his brothers and he took this, took the bread and he broke it and he said, as often as you receive this bread, do it in remembrance of me and let's receive that. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup and he proclaimed to them right in front of them, this cup represents my blood as often as you receive it receive it in remembrance of me of what he has done for each one of us we're those at the table Lord we receive we receive the cup represents your blood of the new covenant we gladly receive it Jesus, you're the ultimate giver. I mean, what I have learned in my life is you can't be outgiven. You own everything. And so, Lord, right now, for those of us who have been convicted, and I am one of those, of my time and my talent, my treasure, Lord, that we would step now, step into that in faith to serve you and your kingdom. To me, this was a call to action for me. Even more, even deeper. There's more, there's more, there's more. And God, that's what I want. I want everything that you have for me. I want nothing in the way of what you have for me. And that could be used in your kingdom. So as we go into worship, I pray, Lord, that our hearts start to align with yours. Also pray for people here who have received some conviction this morning, not condemnation. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's really clear. And they want someone to pray with them to help them make decisions on what they need to do with their time, their talent, and their treasure, that they would come forward. Also, Lord, I pray for those who felt the, even the call to be saved in a message like this, that they would come forward and get to a prayer partner and let them walk them through what it is to be saved. Also pray for those who need healing. And maybe it's the financial healing. Maybe there are people here that are in such dire need of finances that they would take a step and trust with you and maybe they should come and be prayed for also. God, I pray that our walls would come down before you and that we would trust you with all things. And that this would really start to become a real relationship in a safe place. You're for us and your word proves it. You're not against us. So today we trust you and we love you in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for um, being a part of today's message. We are grateful uh, for you, our church family, community online. Um, it's an interesting way of doing church and our hope and prayer would be at some point we could get to hug you, shake your hand, see you in person. Uh, that'd be a wonderful thing. And know that no matter where you're at, uh, we love you, we care for you. And the most important thing is, is that the Lord is there. His presence is there. And if you felt the presence of the Lord uh, during today's message, we would love to hear from you. Uh, there's some contact information on the screen. Uh, whether it be a prayer request that you have now or 
uh, a praise report, or you want to talk about salvation. Uh, either way, we're here and standing by for you. Again, we love you. We thank you for tuning in today. Take care.